Listen, Donald Trump is the blackest president that we've ever had in the history of the United States of America. And I mean that by policies. I'm not talking about the color of his skin. And black men desire to leave their families. That's one of the, the ploys of the D Democratic Party is to remove the black father out of the home. And if you destroy the black father, you start to destroy black legacies. Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. And today I have a treat for you all. We're checking out another video from my guy over at the Drinking Gourd. I'm not even going to tell you the title. I know y'all seen it at the beginning. This is going to be fire. If you haven't already, please go over to the Drinking Gourd. Subscribe to that brother's channel, man. It's like everything. Go watch everything. That brother's content is phenomenal. Before we get into the video, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Today at gmail.com is the best way to get a hold of me. And before we get into the video, we must have a word from our sponsor, Child Light Candle. support child light candles today link down in the description box below when you purchase a candle 25 percent of the profits goes towards supporting local organizations and charities that directly help veterans and their families child light candles is a veteran-owned organization get your child light candle today child light candles fragrances lit for the kingdom now let's get into the video trump is the blackest president that we've ever had in the history of the United States of America. Please, no, no, no. That's right, he said that. And we'll get back to the full context of that statement later. Hi, Asagai from Drinking Gourd. Today we're going to see two sides of the same speech. Trump spoke at a black conservative federation meeting in South Carolina. He was speaking about his rise in popularity among black voters. Here's some of what he said. I got indicted for nothing, for something that is nothing. They were doing it because it's election interference. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing, but it possibly, I don't know, maybe there's something there. This is how many Democrats view this statement. That's probably one of the most racist comments he's ever made. His, his feeling that because he's being indicted and because he's being prosecuted for things he did, whether they are deemed illegal or not in a court of law, he's making, so what, we've all been locked up. We all have a mugshot. We, we all fall into this bucket of indictment. And because of that, we should feel closer to our overly indicted president. These people were going to be upset no matter what he said. They were ready to be triggered. If you look at how they how they were sitting there, their posture, posture, they were ready to be triggered from the beginning and they missed what he said. He said some people have been uh, unfairly or unjustly prosecuted. He didn't say all black people can resonate with this. He said some Keyword, some, but again, these people are snowflakes. These people are some of the folks that Harriet said, hey, when I went down to the plantation to, uh, you know, pull some slaves, uh, to help save slaves, you know, I was able to do so. But some folks I couldn't save because they didn't realize they were slaves. The biggest problem I have with the left is that facts don't matter to them at all. Trump said those who have been discriminated against by the legal system, not everyone or every black person. Tell me, where did he lie? Because for 400 years, there's been a two-tier justice system to black men, particularly to black men, right? Black men have been fighting the system. And now we see, and I hate to hear people like Reverend Sharpton and others who are, who, are, who, are, who are denying the fact that black men are seeing themselves in Donald Trump. They see that there is a real two-tier system, uh, and they are saying, hey, that's been happening to me. Hey, that's been happening to my uncle. Hey, that happened to my father. Hey, that's the same thing. That's, and if they're doing, Don, they doing it to Donald Trump, then my God, we have no, 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 no uh, a chance uh, in America. 
Absolutely. And that was the thing. Now, if, if, if a liberal said something along those lines, if a Democrat said something along those lines, which we know they have, it's okay. They can push the victimhood or oppression. It's got to come from them, though. It's got to come from them. But the fact that this is happening to President Donald Trump and you got some brothers out there that it really resonates with because they feel like they've been uh, unjustly uh, punished and uh, unjustly treated within the two tier justice system that happens here in America. These people feel a certain kind of way about it. But I promise you, if it was uh, this guy, I think his name is Jason Johnson. If he said it, they would they would champion it. If it was Joe Biden got up there and said it. If it was a uh, Andrew Gillen that got up and said something along those lines. Charlemagne the God, if he got up there and said something along those lines, they would champion it and say, right on, brother, you're right. But because it's President Donald Trump, these people were ready to uh, disagree with everything. They were. They were 100% ready. These are handpicked people. Handpicked. I'm sure they were polled. I'm sure they were surveyed and questioned. They are suffering from some real Trump derangement syndrome, and they made sure they put all of the people, all of the TDS members on this panel. There's no free thinker a part of this panel watching this. Let's keep going. The real irony is that Joe Biden's crime bill in the 90s locked up millions of black men. Also, how ironic that Trump freed Kodak Black for the same crime that Hunter Biden walked away from. But that isn't all that Trump said. Not only did Joe Biden uh, implement the 94 crime bill, he implemented the 86 and 88 crime bill. He's the reason why Brothers was getting five years for a dime-sized piece of rock. He's the reason why. His policies actually exacerbated the problem. You know, the whole premise behind it or... Um, you know, I guess the thought process was, hey, we'll just lock them up. There was no talk of treatment, at least for the people that were addicts. Now, I understand the dealers. I also understand the people that committed violence during those time frames. Those people, the book needs to be thrown at them. But there is a plethora of people that have spent decades upon decades in prison for a small piece of drugs when they probably should have been given some form of drug treatment program. But because of the mandatory minimums and it gave the judges no discretion, they had no choice. And Joe Biden implemented that law and he's actually bragged about it. He was the one working with Strom Thurmond and Senator Byrd on crafting these uh, um, um, these these very, very harsh penalties. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great, great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you, the American people. I'm being indicted for you, the black population. I am being indicted for a lot of different groups by sick people. These are sick, sick people. The truth is, is that the justice system has been weaponized against anyone who opposes the Biden administration. I just think it's very uh, insensitive and kind of insulting to say that or to imply that, you know, I'm a criminal. So now the black people can relate to me or I can relate to them. I think that's um, and I, I, like TC says, I don't take much of what he says seriously. I just think he'll get up and say whatever comes to his head. And if he, and he'll get away with it and nobody will really hold him to task for it. See, these are the weak dudes. These are weak men. He's not a free thinker. He doesn't have his own mind. Again, President Donald Trump said that he is being indicted for the American people, for the black population. See, what they won't tell you is, is that the left, they want to rip up the Constitution. If they had it their way, they would weaponize the uh, justice system against all of their political opponents. They would. Because they don't want a republic. They don't want a constitutional republic. They want communist, socialist, dictatorial 
type rule in the United States of America? Why do you think the Gavin Newsom's are so chummy with countries like like uh, China? Why do you think Joe Biden and his son has has multiple under the table backdoor business deals with China and countries like Ukraine? Why do you think they have these? They would like to implement those same policies right over here. They do not want a middle class. They want a class of haves and have nots. They want a class of very wealthy elites and poor people where the wealthy elites control everything. That's their preference. It's unfortunate that these brothers, they can't even see it. They don't understand it. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's people like these guys that have been voting against their own interests. And they don't even know it. They have no idea what they've been voting for. They have no idea. All they listen to is MSDNC and the CNN propaganda machines. And they've been brainwashed to believe that what those people are saying is true. And they, I, I would put any amount of money on it. They have not taken the time to do their own research about the party that they are supporting. Isn't that the whole reason why you're here? This is in-depth analysis. How about another perspective? I mean, Donald Trump says, listen, I'm not coming to fight for no one race. I'm not coming to raise up one particular race. I'm not fighting just for the black community. I'm fighting for anyone, any race, anybody that is an American citizen that if the tide rises, all of the boats rise with them. And that includes those in the black community. And black people are saying that. They're tired of Democrats' lies and constantly promising things that never come to pass just by simply supporting the Democratic Party. Donald Trump is changing that. As you can see, there are clear reasons for the gain in popularity. But the left wants you to ignore them. Absolutely. Absolutely. The left, again, I keep saying this, I've said this in a multitude of videos, the left, they're nothing but grifters. All of them, from the media to the politicians, they're all grifters. They come with hope change, they come with lies. They're the party that preys on the people. They're the party that hopes that you stay dumb and sleep and blind so they can continue to rob you. It's them. Black people, wake up. White people that are supporting this party, wake up. Supporting this party is actually supporting the downfall of America. Wake up. Listen, the mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts and they sell them for $19 a piece. It's pretty amazing. Millions, by the way, millions of these things have been sold. So I don't know if I'm proud of it or not proud of it. It feels like he thinks we're all criminals, that we all have mugshots. We all have friends with mugshots. So that would appeal to us. That doesn't appeal to me. And I don't think that appeals to the mass majority. Sister, you are really on a national TV program with a Snuggie on. Are you freaking kidding me? But your representation, see what I'm talking about? The Democrats, they go and get some of the worst, most ignorant people that they can possibly get out of the black community. And that's the people that they push in your face. And they demonize and talk down to the intelligent black people. The Ben Carsons, the Clarence Thomases, the Thomas Souls of the world, the Larry Elders of the world. Those aren't the people that they want speaking on the behalf of black people. It's a sister with a Snuggie on. Are you freaking kidding me? Of black people, but if that's what he thinks that we are and are all about, that definitely means he misses the mark. Why does it always start with feelings? Notice how she feels like what she thinks he thinks is fact. In other words, just because she thinks he thinks it, she will speak on it as if it's true. Yeah, I, I know this hurts my head just. I know what real racism is, and it's most definitely not Donald Trump, but the reality of it is there is a higher crime and violence amongst our people. There is a higher crime of, 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 of us, black community, uh, in prisons. And it's not because we're just black, it's because of a lack of opportunities that when you have people like Al Sharpton who are constantly speaking race and race baiting and focusing on emotionalism and not policies, then you're going to continue to get the same thing that we're always getting, and that is people who are fighting emotionalism and not dealing dealing with policy. It's well, the other thing too is, is that we got quote unquote pastors, reverence, preachers that are in these positions in the mainstream media, in positions of power, like a Raphael Warnock, who's a senator, 
that won't tell the truth to black people about how to improve their lives. There's a, there's, there's a, there's a very, very short list of what needs to be done to improve the lives of black people. And honestly, all poor people graduate high school, take your education seriously. Don't have any kids out of wedlock. Wait until you get married to do that. Don't go out and just spend your money on a bunch of frivolous things. If you can do those things, the likelihood of you being in poverty, slim to none. Raise, find a good woman, find a good man, have kids with those, with those people. Build your family, raise your children together the right way. These people are pastors, but yet they won't give black folks the real game. These people are in Congress, but yet they won't give the American people the real game in how to be a success in America. The millionaires in this country, the majority of them, they're not your entertainers, rappers. They're not those types of people. Listen to this, y'all. The average millionaire in America is a 56-year-old man who is married, has been married to the same woman for 20 plus years, had his kids with said woman, raised those kids up to be strong, productive citizens. Those kids are now grown, handling their business, not coming back home with their hands out. They live in, they live in pretty uh, um, modest homes. They typically drive older cars. The number one car a millionaire drives is a Toyota. That's the number one car. And typically, they're some of the richest and wealthiest people in the neighborhood that they live in because they live amongst regular working people. One other thing, large majority of them are small business owners, large majority of them. And they did not get money or receive money from a family member to start said business. That's who the millionaires are. So if we, we know who they are, there's a book by Thomas J. Stanley called The Millionaire Next Door. If you haven't read it, it's free on YouTube. You can listen to it for free. It will give you the blueprint to who these people are. See, social media, um, uh, you watch TV, they will make you think that the only people that really got money are these athletes, entertainers who go out and just spend money, money all willy-nilly and just fri and frivolously. Those aren't the people with bread. Thomas J. Stanley, excuse me, would call those people income affluent yes they make a lot of money but they don't keep a lot of money they never become millionaires in the long run now why won't the reverends out there show and teach this is how you become a success there's no such thing as an overnight success you find show me an overnight success i'll show you somebody with a story of working their tail off let's keep going not just emotions lefties will twist all forms of logic to fit their narrative be wary of an ideology that requires truth to be invented. Al Sharpton says, uh, you aren't black. Play cut seven. Why would black What's Americans relate to Donald Trump there? I don't understand the connection. <clears throat> well, first of all, let, let's be clear. Donald Trump is using the stereotype of blacks being criminals. And therefore, we would gr gravitate towards somebody in a mugshot but now he's a symbol of being persecuted he's being persecuted by black prosecutors a black woman judge in uh, the federal court in washington dc and any shameless blacks that are standing there applauding him needs to check the facts okay i'm trying to keep up with the thought process but this is tiring so let me get this straight since the prosecutors of Trump are black, then it isn't discrimination because black people can't discriminate against whites. Uh, this is just... Listen, Donald Trump is the blackest president that we've ever had in the history of the United States of America. And I mean that by policies. I'm not talking about the color of his skin. I'm talking about the fact that this man has introduced money to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. And that's why black men are resonating to him. I'm talking about the fact that opportunity zones were created to bring in businesses into low income communities. A lot of them, Charlie, are black communities. So black people are violent in certain areas of America, not because we're just violent people, because we're fighting over scraps. But if you can 
convince white Americans who own companies uh, who can create uh, create jobs or even black owners that can come into low income territories, build their facilities, build their plant, their businesses, create jobs within those communities. Right. Then you're raising the tide in all communities. That's what Donald Trump is all about. That seemed logical enough. Just remember, though, that no matter how logical they have feelings and feelings are everything in the world. Today. So it's, it's like it's, I don't see it as 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 something that 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 we're embracing him on. I, I do feel like low key we're actually laughing at him by you know buying those t-shirts and wearing them. Um, I don't. I, I just don't. I just feel as though like like he 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 views us as like just a joke um, by doing the things that he do. Um, the reality of it is uh, black people are tired uh, of, of having given a monopoly to the Democratic Party without any change. And right now, black people are wising up and they say, listen, we're not going to vote just for a party. We want you to vote for our interests. And that's where Donald Trump is coming. That's why I think it all boils down to Donald Trump does not respect. And it's not only the black race. He doesn't respect people. He is just very disrespectful, and he puts us all in a little box, his own little category. Since when did Donald Trump do anything remotely close to what this lady just said? Sounds like Joe Biden to me. If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I bet she didn't have a lot of smoke for, for Uncle Daddy Joe. I'm sure she didn't. See, these are the types of people that Harriet Tubman couldn't save that all black people are the same and we're all bad. And I personally think Donald Trump needs to take a look in the mirror and see his own reflection. How does this pass as news commentary? Was that really the best you could bring to the table? Do, do you believe the hand of God is on Trump? Without question, Charlie, I mean, there's zero reason for any person to have been attacked the way he's been attacked and to survive every attack that has hit him and still come out on top. These indictments, the foolish uh, Russian collusion, um, way back when he was running, the whole um, you know uh, um, video that the, the hot mic comment that was made, right? Um, all these things that should have taken anybody out. Just one of those incidents, they would have resigned or dropped out of the race. All it's done is popula uh, made Donald Trump more popular yeah. to American people related to him, and so here. Oh. So God is using Donald Trump to expose this thing. Right. They are creating laws. They are indicting this man for some frivolous things, uh, foolish things. But yet they're trying to do whatever it takes to just simply get Trump. And black men desire to leave their families. That's one of the, the ploys of the D Democratic Party is to remove the black father out of the home. And if you destroy the black father, you start to destroy black legacies. You just start to destroy black economic empowerment. Uh, listen, I'm voting for my interests, my brother. I'm voting for my interests. I'm voting for my children. I'm voting for my cousins, my nephews, my black nephews, my black family members to realize that we need to be in America that, we're, that will do what Dr. King said. And that is that not just me for the color of my skin, but for the content of my character, the type of person I am and the person I'm becoming. My hard work should be rewarded in America and not be blocked by the color of my skin. Praise God. That brother, Pastor Mark Burns, is a true patriot and it seems like he's a true man of god wow asagai from the drinking gourd if you have not already gone over and subscribed to his channel please do so the brother is fire with the edits he did an outstanding job with this video goodness gracious wow I hope you guys enjoyed this, man. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Asswise today at Gmail. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Keep God first in your life, America first, and I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.